Hello oh, and welcome. Today we're going to discuss the organization of public lands, often referred to as the rectangular survey system. The rectangular survey system was put in place with the land ordinance of 1785 so that we had a systematic means of organizing or surveying all of the blue states, which are the public domain land. Prior to the land ordinance of 1785 and the rectangular survey system, the state land states, which would be the 13 colonies, organized their land or surveyed their land with the meets and bounds system. Now the meets and bounds system was a very organic system. It's just as you might imagine if you were just going to lay out an area of land based on the topography or the geography, the visible landmarks that you can see. In our sample here, we have a piece of land bordered by a creek or a river. Um, we have demarcation of a felled maple, a marked oak, a big rock, the neighbor's land, a marker that was actually put there to designate a corner. You can see how it was very haphazard well, systematic that person or that land, but very haphazard over a large period of land. Now, can you imagine what would happen if the topography or the land changed? The river moved, the maple was removed, somebody moved the designated marker, the whole survey system would fall apart and the person's property would not be as well defined. Great disputes could happen, and they did. Further, this would be terribly ineffective over a large period of land. Imagine all of the land in those blue states, the public domain land. So with the public domain system, we were trying to put together, or I should say Jefferson, uh, Thomas Jefferson put together the rectangular survey system, and he was hoping to get a standard, consistent means of measurement for large areas of land, all of those blue states you saw on the map and fixed points of reference that wouldn't shift with the topography, that he didn't have to worry if the river moved or the oak fell or the marker was moved. The survey would stay intact. And he did. With the rectangular survey system, he created a tool that had several components, and we'll walk through each of these. The first pair are meridians and baselines. The second pair are township and ranges. The third section is sections. And as you move through each of these demarcations, you get to a more and more granular, a smaller and smaller tool of measurement to get a more specific piece of land. The meridians and the baselines are almost like longitude and latitude lines. The meridians run north and south, just like a longitude line, um, measuring great distances over what we would now consider multiple states. The baselines, and I remember that thinking of a baseboard, are horizontal, like a latitude line, running east and west. You can clearly see them on this map. Remember, all of the colored in states are the public domain land, and the meridians are the vertical lines, and the baselines are the horizontal lines. Okay, these are fixed points of references over large areas of land. Now, any given homeowner isn't going to want to purchase half of Kansas, so we need to break that land down into smaller increments that would make more sense for a settler. Parenthetically, you can find this map on the Bureau of Land Management's website. I have it down here at the bottom. Within meridians and baselines, we have smaller units of measurement. Those are township and ranges. The townships divide up the meridians by six mile increments, the ranges divide up the baselines by six mile increments. So what you see here is you've got your meridian line, the bold vertical line, and the baseline, the bold horizontal line. And going north from the baseline, you have the first township, then the second township designated north. So you've got township one north, township two north, and each one is at a six mile increment. Further, you've got the ranges, so you've got those breaking up again at six mile increments, the baseline. So you have range one east, 
range 2 east. So let's take a look at this one that's highlighted. It would be considered Township 2 north, okay, so it's 1, 2 north of the baseline, and range 2 west, 1, 2 west of the meridian. Now the tricky thing is, and I have to confess this is confusing, township lines and the whole block is also counted, called a township. Okay, so the line is called a township line, and the block is called a township. Gets a little confusing, but that's the, that's the naming. Okay. Each township has a unique identification. It's uniquely that piece of land. No other piece of land in the entire United States can have that label, and that was the beauty, the genius of the entire rectangular system, rectangular survey system, that nothing could get confused. If you were being identifying your property as Township 2 North Range 2 West of the 3rd Principal Meridian, there was no other property that could have that identifier. Sometimes townships can be a little confusing in the abstract. So I have a slide here with all of the townships in one county. This happens to be Sedgwick County, Kansas, and inside of it in its entirety is the city of Wichita. What you can clearly see is all of the different townships color-coded. Now each township has its own name. We often don't hear those unless you're looking into actual land research and coming into this project. For example, Greenlee, Eagle, Valley Center, Grant, Lincoln, Sherman, they're all the names of the individual townships, which happen to be a six mile square area of land. So, for example, we've been looking at the naming of the actual townships. Sherman Township, highlighted here, happens to be Township 26 South and Range 3 West. That means it is the third range west of the principal meridian, which happens to run right through the center of Wichita. So counting west from the center of Wichita, you see Park Township, Union Township, then T Sherman Township, so range 3 west and it happens to be Township 26 South. The baseline that it's counting off of happens to be the Nebraska-Kansas border. So it doesn't always work out as a state border, but in this case it did. So we're counting down 26 townships, and, that we, and in that case we get to the Sherman Township. So Sherman is Township 26 South, Range 3 West, and it happens to be one of the townships within the entire community or area of Sedgwick County, Kansas. Further, within each one of those boxes, those colored boxes like Sherman Township, the area is subdivided into 36 sections. So you can see how the sections are numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six, and it loops back and counts the other direction. It's not left to right straight across like one would normally read. They're a backward S in terms of the numbering system. One, two, three, four, five, six, and each section is one square mile. So within each township, you have 36 square miles. Parenthetically, you might note that within all of the townships, section 16 and 36 were initially reserved for schools. So if your ancestor happened to settle in section 16 or 36 and you're wanting to go and find the first purchase of land, that may get a little more complicated. Finally, within the section, you have subdivisions. So understandably, one person may not want to buy an entire section, which is 640 acres. That's a lot of land. Some settlers did, but not everyone could afford that. So each section is divided by a cross or a T right through the middle and given directional coordinates. Northwest corner, northeast corner, southwest corner, southeast corner. So this, if this is section one, this would be the northwest corner because it too is broken into four sections the northwest corner of the northeast corner of section one. So this is how it all breaks out. You've got your baselines and your meridians, 
Then within that, you have your 36 sections, which break into northwest and southwest and east, northeast and southeast directional coordinates. So you put it all together and you end up with a description of a unique piece of property that sounds something like this. The northeast corner of the northwest corner of section 14, township 2 south, range 3 west. Simple. The point being is there's no other piece of property on this earth or in the United States that can have or claim that unique identifier, which made um, dividing land, selling land, gifting land, willing land, very easy because it was easily identified. So there you go, a brief summary of the township and range, baseline and meridian, rectangular public survey system. If you have any questions, just let me know. Look forward to hearing you from you.